So you want to have more impact in your videos? Okay. But before we continue with the tutorial, be sure to join my Discord as I'll be having you guys more involved in my videos. Okay, so this is what we're going to be making. Uh, okay, okay, this is what we're going to be making today. Nah, but for real, this is what we're going to be working on today. Okay, so what you're going to do first is import your clip and your song into the composition. Then what you're going to do is sync up the clip perfectly to the song. So get the song and double click L on the keyboard. And also make sure you're preferably on 24 FPS. Uh, that's usually what most editors edit on. Um, so yeah, but now what you're going to do is find where there is the impact and where the impact needs to go. I've already synced mine, but I'll just show you the, an example of how it looks like. So this is what it looks like when it's not synced, but as you can see, I have the song and the clip matching. So this is where the impact should go. And that should be the same applied to mostly every song and every edit that you do. So now that you found your uh, impact, where the impact should go, what you're gonna do is get this marker and just drag it to that impact. So now you know where the impact should be. And yeah, so now what you're gonna do is go a few frames back and just do a little build up before the kill. I'm gonna quickly find that. This is where the build up would go. So I put another marker and then I'd find where I want the clip to finish. Okay, so I'd say about yeah, so there's still a bit of movement, but at the same time, that's where the clip's gonna finish. So what I'm gonna do is at the end of the clip where I want it to finish, I'm gonna click Control Shift D and then delete the right side and then go to the build up and Control Shift D on that. Now, if you're not gonna edit build up, you can just cut directly from PR and then do it from there and sync the clip. If you are doing a build up, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut from the build up and then you're gonna find the end and yeah make sure it's you cut from there so it's gonna look like this now if we play through it it's gonna be pretty short as you see it's not a lot of time so what we're gonna do now is click on the clip that we've cut and click Control alt t now we have these time remapped points and now we're gonna do is make a point for each uh, marker and then also for the end of this clip. Now we're also gonna make another marker just before the kill and I'll get to that in a second and I'll tell you why we're doing that. So what we're gonna do also, see this keyframe, we're gonna just drag it to the right and drag this one all the way to the end. And now what we're gonna do is drag the clip also to the end like this. And now also don't forget to click on frame blending and make sure you've added that so that it will so you click it twice and what that will do is that will add in frames for you so that there's no frame loss once you've done that highlight all the keyframes that you have here and click f9 on your keyboard now if you do not not have f9 on your keyboard what you're going to do is right click on the keys and while they're all selected make sure they're all selected right click keyframe assistant and easy ease and this will set it up like this and now what we're going to do is go into the first keyframe, go to graph editor. And once you're in graph editor, you're going to sort of copy me and do this sort of graph like this. And it's mostly a lot of trial and error and playing around with it. But you know, you just play around until you get the right sort of graph. And this is my impact graph that I will be using. The right one is all the way to the left. And um, by the way, I'm also, the way I'm getting it accurately like this without doing this while moving is I'm holding shift and it locks it on to the graph while moving it left and right. And then when, once I'm at the end, I let go of shift and drag this down just a bit. And this one, I put not too sharp, but just right. So it should look like this. And now let's play through it and see what the clip looks like. <laughs> So now that you've got your clips synced and you have the build up synced and everything, we're going to start with just a pan and crop. Now a pan and crop basically changes the way the clip is with scaling and pos positioning. So what we're going to do now is 
click S on our keyboard. And with our build up, we want to have a clip going in and an out on the kill. So we click S, make a keyframe at the start of the build up, go all the way to the kill and then zoom in to about 135. Um, it could vary. You can play around with the settings and just see what fits best for your clip. And now what we're going to do is go all the way to the end of the clip and put the scale to 100. Make sure you drag this point all the way to the end. Now, what we're also going to do is turn on motion blur. So you'll see when we keyframe the graphs. So now what we're going to do is highlight all the key points, click F9. And like I said before, right click and easy ease, go into the graph. And then we're going to do this sort of graph. So just copy me and have it sort of sharp but not too sharp now the graph it varies on what song you have usually those fast songs are like very sharp um the slow paced songs are not too sharp it just depends so make sure you play around with it until you find the best uh sort of graph that fits the clip and the song so now we've got the pen and crop now now that we have the pen and crop let's see what that looks like Okay, not too bad. Let's just quickly get a bit sharper. Good. All right. So now we've got our pen and crop. Now let's move on to the certain effects that we need to add to add that impact to our clip. What you're going to do is search S underscore shake on your effects and presets tab on the right. And then you're going to drag that onto the clip. Now, once it's on the clip, I'll show you the settings in a second. What you're going to do is go to your X shake and just follow these settings and then go to your Y shake and also follow these settings. And then the Z shake, follow these settings. And for the tilt shake, copy these settings. Now you have all those settings down. Make sure you also have left on wrap X and wrap Y and have your amplitude start at 1630. Now what you're going to do is go from 163, go about, about, let's say a few frames forward and then put it to zero. And once you've done that, just copy this graph. All right. Now, once you've done that, it should look like this. Now we're going to add in another shake, which is called dissolve shake. All you need to do is just copy these settings and you'll be set. So these are all the normal settings here. And this is the X shake settings. This is the Y shake settings, Z shake settings and tilt shake settings. So just pause and have a look at these settings real quick. And once you've got them down, all you need to do is have your amplitude at zero, move about two frames forward and have it to 7.88 and then go all the way about 10 frames and put it to zero. And then just copy this graph. Now, once you've done that, you should add subtle shake, nothing too special. Now we're going to add flicker. So all you need to do is make another adjustment layer, but this time have this one a bit longer than the rest. And what we're going to do is search S underscore flicker when my computer doesn't want to freeze. S underscore flicker. And once you've added that in, all you need to do is have the amplitude at 0.31. And that's all you need to do. And boost the frequency up a bit. Let's see what that looks like now. Now we're going to add Twitch, Optics Compensation and Tint. Now with Twitch, what you're going to do is you're going to have these settings right here. And once you've done that, go into enable, enable slide, go to behavior and have these settings exactly. Then what you're going to do is go to operator controls, go to slide. Then what you're going to do is have your slide amp like this at 45 and make sure all these settings are exactly like this. Now what we're going to do is go about, I'd say 10 frames forward and put the amp to zero and copy this graph. Now it should start to look like this. Now what we're going to do is add in our optics compensation. Also, don't worry about this black bar at the top. We're going to fix that soon. So now what we're going to do is add our optics compensation. So once we've dragged it in, tick this box and leave everything else here. And the field of view, put it to 162.9 and it should start to look like this. So once it was like this and we've dragged it all the way up here. 
So once once we've done that, what we're gonna do now with object compensation is have it from 162 and go about almost to the end of the cliff and put it to zero. And the graph should look like this. So we don't want it to go away completely with the effect. We want it to slowly, slowly zoom out. The whole clip should look like this. Lastly, what we're going to add is our tint. So once we've dragged in the tint from our search bar, once we've dragged our tint, we're going to put the amount to 100 and it should look like this. And what we're going to do is start with 100 and keyframe that to zero once we get to about 10 frames forward. And the graph should look like this. We want it to have a subtle fade out, as you can see. Nothing too abrupt, just a subtle fade out. And now with all these effects combined, the clip should look like this. So I hope you guys enjoyed that tutorial. Nothing too complicated. I wanted to have it keep basic. Um, and I will do more tutorials like this in the future. Be sure to drop down some questions. Um, let me know what else I should do, what I should do tutorials on. And yeah, make, be sure to like and subscribe and be sure to turn on the notification bell so you know when I will be uploading another video. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.